So I saw an article today that I wanted to comment on. It has to do with an article we've already looked at. It's kind of an update. Let's go ahead and take a look. Fake service dogs. Arizona Republicans want $250 fine. Disability advocates opposed. Along with diet and exercise. Sorry about that. A handful of Republican legislators have decided that they know better than the disability community. That's the obvious takeaway from the Senate Government Committee's decision to advance Senate Bill 1040, which would levy a $250 fine on people who falsely claim that their pet is a service animal. A number of advocacy groups oppose the bill, including the Arizona Center for Disability Law, Ability360, National Federation of the Blind of Arizona, and the Arizona Commission for the Deaf and Hard of Hearing. On Wednesday, the committee chamber was packed with people who had shown up to protest, including several people who brought their own service dogs. We're concerned that this bill will put business businesses and the police in the position of judging whether the person has a disability or the service animal is legitimate, it explained April Reed, the vice president of advocacy for Ability360. Many disabled people have invisible disabilities, such as epilepsy or PTSD, she pointed out. In order to prove that their service animal is legitimate, those individuals potentially would have to disclose private information about their medical conditions. The Americans with Disabilities Act already allows stores and other businesses to kick out service animals that are being aggressive or disruptive, making the bill unnecessary, she added. The bill's author, State Senator John Kavanaugh, argued on Wednesday that it is intended to deter people from spending $25 on Amazon to purchase a fake service dog vest. I watched a woman being dragged around by her fraudulent service dog in Walmart the other day, he said. It's becoming epidemic. Well, welcome to the party. That rationale doesn't make sense to Sarah Cater, an attorney at the Arizona Center for Disability Law. And remember, we already talked about Sarah Cater must not actually use a service dog because she's the one that said there was no problem with fake service dogs. Yeah. Good people aren't going to do this anyway, and bad people who are buying fake service vests aren't going to obey the signs, she said. What is going to happen is that people with legitimate service dogs get harassed. Yeah, possibly. Yeah. The bill states that a court would impose the $250 fine, she pointed out. But having to go to court and prove that a service dog is legitimate could be difficult or impossible for people with disabilities who have limited access to transportation. If they end up missing a court hearing, they could have a warrant issued for their arrest. You know, if it were me, I'd suddenly have problems with transportation and let them arrest me. That could be a fun time. Kavanaugh, a Republican from Fountain Hills, is also trying to make it illegal to drive around with a reptile on your lap. At, that has to do with this how. He claimed that police wouldn't actually enforce the service dog law. Now, they'll write the tickets, and to get out of the ticket, you'll have to go to court and prove your dog's legitimate. That's how that will work. They will write you the tickets and you have to show up in court or pay the ticket. I will be the first to admit that there will be next to no cases of people being given summons for this, he said. You want to bet? The only way you're going to be found guilty of this, quite frankly, is if you're dumb enough to admit to a cop that it's not a real service animal. I'm not buying it. I, I'm not buying it. Based on Wednesday's hearing, it seemed pretty clear that most disability advocates aren't particularly concerned that, that our other people are falsely pa passing off their pets as service dogs. 
or at least not concerned enough to feel that an outright ban is necessary. The Republicans on the committee didn't seem to care, though. To me, it's very disrespectful when someone is impersonating someone with a disability, State Senator Sonny Borelli said, drawing a comparison to people who falsely claim to have served in the military. Well, that bothers me, too. The bill passed four to three, split along party lines. In addition to Borelli and Kavanaugh, Republicans David Farnsworth and Gail Griffin voted in favor of advancing it. Democrats Robert Meza, Juan Mendez, and Lupe Contreras were opposed. Like, it matters, okay? Way to bring politics into it. Two other committees have yet to hold hearings on the legislation. So if we remember, um, the last article, they were talking about in Arizona, this is in Arizona, um, making this law that police could write people tickets for having a fake service dog. And then in order to get out of the ticket, you would have to go to court and prove your dog is legitimate. And in the comments on that one, um, I asked, what's proof going to consist of? What what proof is good enough? Um, some ju judges will be easy about it. Other judges will be snot rags about it. What proof's going to be sufficient? That worries me. Because like I said, I may be moving to Arizona. It's a, it's a thought. It's a thing. Um, my parents are looking for property in Arizona where we're all going to move. Um, so what proof is going to be good enough? That, that concerns me. And then they brought up again the transportation. Um, I don't mind proving my dog is a service dog to one entity. You know, I don't want to have to do it at every, every gatekeeper's whim. You know, I don't have time for that. I want to go get a gallon of milk. I don't want to spend half an hour proving my dog's a service dog. Um, but if it was done in advance, you know, that that would be something different. However, you know, we need to decide what the standards are, what proof is good enough, because not everybody's going to have the same proof. Some people have declined to get any proof at all. You know, they're very legitimate. I've seen their dogs. They're very legitimate, but they haven't bothered to do any kind of documentation or proof. What's going to happen to them? Um, so this disturbs me. And now they've passed it along. Um, I am hoping that as it gets higher up, um, the Department of Justice is going to send them a, a, a note, a friendly note, to tell them um, this isn't going to work out well. That's what I'm hoping. Um, otherwise, everybody in Arizona, you best start, start documenting your dog's training. Um, and this is what I suggest. This is what I do for my dog. Um, because I can't certify, you know, under my standards, my own dogs, that that'd be conflict of interest. Clearly what I do is I compete in obedience. Um, not for very long. I get a CD title. I compete to get a CD title. And what that tells people is that I have gone to the competitions, a third party who is neutral has seen my dog perform the obedience maneuvers and he has scored properly to uh, qualify three times. He's done it three times. Um, and then you can get the title. In addition, I do all three of the CGC tests, the CGC, the CGC Urban, and the CGC Advanced. Taken together, they are very close to a public access test. Um, not exactly the same, but very, very close. Um, so it gives me a good lead on being able to show that third parties, not just one, but multiple third parties have decided that my dog, you know, properly can execute the, the named maneuvers, you know, which ranges from sit, 
to being around another dog without flipping out to navigating stairs, a, you know, a public ish environment, that kind of thing. Um, I might also, it depends on this, the current dog I haven't done this on just because it, it costs and there's been some really deep financial issues lately, but sometimes I'll go and the ATTS Society, American Temperament Test Society, around the country at dog shows, they run um, tests. So you can go and the fee is variable, 35 to 55 you can go and run your dog through the temperament test and then they record the results and certify the results and give you, you know, a, a paper that tells you how you did or how your dog did. That's another way of documenting your dog, that your dog has has a temperament or has a, a response appropriate for a service dog. Um, <clears throat> other agencies give tests. They're... Um, Oh, gosh, I can't even remember the organization, but they have a whole series of tests you can run through. Um, so it doesn't have to be the ones I've named. Then people mentioned to me, well, that tests for all these other maneuvers, but it doesn't show tasks. Well, the best I can do on the tasks is video the tasks. Most people have a cell phone. Most people are, have the capability to video on that cell phone. You know, in a pinch, it doesn't have to be great quality video as long as you can see what's going on. If possible, uh, videotape just two, two of your dog dog's tasks, and you'd be all right. You'd be okay because the law states work or perform tasks, plural. So if you have two documented on video, you're, you're golden. Pick, pick which two. That's what I would do. If this thing actually manages to go through, that's what I would do. This is just, this has got me concerned, you know, because a business could claim anybody is a fake because they can't tell the person is disabled. They could call the cops and insist they write them a ticket for being fake. Then that person, whether or not they could even make it to court, has got this ticket. They've got a fight for no good reason. It, you know, it could be used as a tool of harassment. So, anyway, tell me what you guys think. Um, until next video, bye.